Hi, I'm Kathy Tadaldi. I'm here at the Denham Springs Walker Branch of the Livingston Library, and we're going to have a little art lesson today. I'm going to show you how to make some of these pretty things that I have here. Um, I got the idea off of YouTube. I love YouTube. And uh, the lady, it was, uh, she was showing how to reuse old book pages. And I don't know if you know if you remember when we uh, covered the book, but the book that I covered was actually a discard, and I've taken some of the pages out of it to use for artwork. And uh, first, let me show you, you don't even have to remove the pages. This particular girl that I was watching just used the book as a sketch pad. And so she, she could flip through pages, you know, and she would do her artwork right in the book. And I thought that was kind of fun. But then if you come up with something that you actually like and you want to frame it and uh, show it off, that's the things that I've shown that I have out here to show you today. And I hope you're not saying, oh, I'm not an artist, I can't draw, because I'm going to show you some real simple things to draw, and then I'm going to show you some other things that you can do if you don't think you can draw. I have three other things. Uh, this one I drew from a sketch. It's a, just a little prom dress. This one is a feather, clearly. And this is a page, I, I cut out the picture and glued it on. Uh, sort of decoupage style, but I haven't painted over it. So, and then I've got some silhouettes that I've done as well. And I'm going to show you how to do each one of these. We're going we're to play with that a little bit. And I'm also going to show you how to draw an oval nice and easily so that you can, uh, you can frame yours with a little, a little sketching, a little oval there if you want to do that before you put it in the frame. So the first one I want to talk about is the cutouts. That's nice and easy, and I, I did this one. I did some bird pictures, and, and uh, I have several here. This is a good one. It's nice and simple, and you just get some nice sharp scissors, and you cut around the edges. Decide what parts you want to keep and what you want to leave. And uh, this one is a butterfly. I have a butterfly in here. Ah, there we go. The butterfly on the flower. So here's another butterfly on the flower. And here's one that I already cut out, a little moth. And you can decide how you want to arrange it, depending on the size of your book page, and you glue it down. And then I'll show you how to decorate the corners, the edges, like I said, when we make the oval. So you can do it just by cutting out a picture and gluing it down, and that's a real nice effect. This one is a little hummingbird. And if you cut around this, the branch and the bird, uh, I wouldn't try to cut out each and every pine needle, I would cut the little branch and then I would draw the pine needles in after I laid it down on the page. You see? So that, I just used my glue stick to glue the picture down onto the book art, to the book page, and then it becomes art. And like I said, if you want to draw, oh, I know what else I was going to do. I was going to draw his antenna back in, because I had to cut that off. So that's a little mixed media there. You, you glue the picture down and then you add some of the details back in if you want to. Here's one, another little hummingbird, and if I was to cut that one out, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to cut those little delicate flowers out. I would just draw that in onto the page. I would, you know, kind of make a sketch similar to that next to the bird. Now I'm going to show you the silhouette. The next thing is I took this picture and I traced, I took a piece of white paper, laid it on top of it, and I traced the bird and then I cut that picture out. So now I have a little cutout of the hummingbird. And you can work with that in several different ways. Ah, here's one that I did. This was a, an Oriole, Baltimore Oriole. And uh, I thought it was a nice simple, and he was a good size too. So I glued him to a piece of heavy paper. This uh, cardstock is a good weight because I wanted to draw around him. So after I cut him out, I glued the paper first, okay, and I cut, I didn't, I didn't make the cutout, I glued the picture right onto the cardstock and I cut it out. And then I traced him onto the paper, I outlined it with a black pen, and then afterwards I went back and I colored it in with a sharpie. You see, so now I have the silhouette of the bird. Now you think that might look a little plain, but I did the same thing with a cat. And then I drew the oval, and I, all I did for, to decorate the oval was I drew little circles, little circles all the way around the oval, and then I used some watercolor to do the around the edges. And I have my watercolor back here. 
And I just, you can also use colored pencils or marks a lot. Just use whatever you have at home. This is one of those projects that the more you play with it, the more you find out what you're comfortable with. In fact, for him, I'm going to mount him on a piece of black paper. And I think I'm going to cut the edges. Um, I'm going to make the whole picture oval. Let's see what that looks like. This is the black paper that I want him on. And so I'm going to just cut about a, maybe a half inch around the oval. Now I'll tell you one thing, when you are planning to put it on, to put your picture onto a, um, onto a background, you want to decide what size your frame is going to be because you want to cut the background to fit the frame. Now I happen to know that these are 8 by 10, so I'm going to cut this piece of paper to be 8 by 10. I cut it to the size of my frame. There you go. Move this over out of the way. Let me straighten out my... Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. If Martha Stewart taught me anything, <laughs> it's that you don't have to be perfect. And it still has a nice artistic effect. So I'm, I'm just trimming it a little bit because the sides were thinner than the top and the... All right. Now, I'm going to center this get some glue, my trusty glue stick, I'm not going to worry about going all the way out to the edge, sometimes it's a nice look, like on this one, I didn't go all the way out to the edge, it looks like it's supposed to be that way. Kind of eyeball it. There you go, and it's ready to go into the frame. Now, I don't know if I would choose a black frame since I matted him in black. I might put him in the silver frame. But when you put it in the frame, it really makes it pop. It really makes it look special. It's ready to hang on the wall once you get the frame around it. So there's the silhouette. And this is, like I said, this is the bird. And I got him by cutting out a bird picture and tracing around it. So that's really easy. You don't have to be a good artist to do that sort of thing. You just have to be creative and look through the picture books. I've, I found a book here um, I'm going to show you. In case you find a picture that you want to use and it's not in a book that you can cut up. You don't want to cut up every book that you, you know, you, you don't want to cut pages out of books. Only books that are being thrown away or have been damaged. So I found a picture of a lily in a book that I like. I like that picture. I like the, the shape of the lily and the, and the direction it's looking, but I certainly can't cut it out of the book. This is a library book, so I take a piece of paper and I take a pencil and I just trace around the lily itself. And you can, you can take liberties with your picture since this is going to be a silhouette, or maybe you don't want to be a, maybe this is going to be one that you're going to color in. And you're going to use this to get your picture started. But tracing is certainly allowed, and the thinner the paper, the better. This is just plain old copy paper, and in this case, it's working quite well. If I'm not sure, I can, you can see me lifting it and putting it back down again. There we are, and the last petal is turn this away and inside is the center the center is right there now you can see I just traced the picture now it's ready for me to cut it out around the lines if I want to uh, trace it onto the I, I can glue a, a stiffer paper to the back of it if I want to and then cut it out 
or I can use this as my sketch to color it in and paint on it or use markers or pencil colors and actually cut that out and put it on there. So you don't always have to cut up a, a magazine or a book in order to get your artwork. You can just trace it out if you want to. So that's another way to get your picture. And sometimes I just look at something and draw it. I'm going to show you how I did this one, what, how I got the idea for that one. I saw, I was looking on the internet through clip art. I went to images and I was looking up fancy dresses and I found this cute little picture of this blue prom dress and I thought, oh, I can sketch that. That's pretty easy. So I, this was my first one. This is one that I sketched just looking at it and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not exactly like it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I thought it came out pretty. And then this is one that I was trying to do from memory. And even though I changed the shoulders a little bit, I liked the way it came out. So I went ahead and used that one for the frame. But this one, I haven't done anything to the corners yet. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But I think I'm going to mount it on this bright pink like that. And I'm going to show you how to draw that. The pencil part you want to draw in kind of lightly because you're going to erase it. And then I came in, this is going to be the straps, and this is going to be the waist. And so I just drew a line from the strap to the waist, and then crisscrossed it at the top. This is the waist. There's a sash there, with a big bow on the side, and then the skirt flares out, like so. And then at the bottom there's a second layer. And that's it. You see, it was a very simple sketch. Now you can go back in with the black pen. Let's use a Sharpie for this. And you kind of go over what you've drawn. There's the coat hanger. There's straps. I'm going to draw the sash in. And then the full skirt. And then we draw some gathers in there. Underneath as well. A little gathering from the side and the top. Once again, very simple sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I used, uh, I actually used a highlighter to color it in. Oh, now before you add color, you take a nice art eraser. The white erasers on the end of the pencil work real well. I wouldn't use the red erasers off of an old-fashioned pencil because they kind of tend to tear up the paper and leave marks. So you, you use a nice art eraser to get the pencil marks off before you color it. After you put the black lines and before you color it, you erase the pencil marks. That's why you kind of want to draw lightly when you're drawing the pencil part. And then you come back with your color. Now at this point, you might want to use watercolor, but I found that the, the highlighter worked really well. Do the skirt. Now I didn't I didn't, I didn't fill it in all together, you see. I just implied. I just kind of left some white space there, too. And at the bottom, peeking out from underneath. Now, what color shall we make this sash? Let's go with uh, blue, maybe. I've done purple. I've done orange. Where's my blue? Well, let's do another orange one. Now, ta-da! You see how easy that was? That was not hard at all. Now, if I had the oval, I cut out an oval. I'm going to show you how to make a nice oval. I would pencil around that very lightly because that's where you're going to make your decorations on the corners. See? And then I would start making my curly cues. And you can be creative with this. You can start with one, 
and then add another one and add one out to the side and then fill in the spaces that you left. You can add flowers and leaves if you want to. And then after you get your curly cues made, you can come back with some pencil colors. Like I said, you can use pencil colors or watercolor and just kind of color that in. From the side. And you can add other colors with it if you want to. And kind of fade it into the picture. And if you as you go around, you can do all four corners that way. And next thing you know, it's ready to put, well, for this one, I would use a pink background. Cut it to fit the frame like I did with the black. And you're ready, you've got something like that that's ready to go. Now, I was gonna show you how to make the oval real quick. To make a perfect oval, it's a little bit like making a perfect circle. If you were going to make a perfect circle, you would put a thumbtack in the middle and make a loop of, or, or, or tie a string, a loop of string. You put the string around the thumbtack. And then you would, cut, you would make your circle. <laughs> so to make an oval, the only difference is, is you put the, th you use two thumbtacks and you space them apart from one another. One of them's up here. One of them's down here. Now, the longer you want your oval to be, the further apart you put your pins. And you make sure your string is a little bit longer than either one of them. That might, I might not have put them quite far enough apart because, okay, all right, let's see. This oval, is gonna look like that. You see? Now, I'm going to show you what happens if I put, if I move the pin down by a couple of inches. This oval. Oops. See the inner oval? It's a little shorter, but it's a little narrower too because I spaced the pins out further. So if you've got a page that's this size, that center one is a pretty good size for your oval. That's about how I got mine. So you cut that out, and if you want it even narrower, you just put the pins further apart. And you use a loop of string. You might have to play around with it, a couple of trial and errors to get it the right size, but you just simply put in two thumbtacks and a, and a, a Tie a knot in a string so you've got a little loop there, and then you can get your ovals to, to cut around or to draw around for your pictures. So when you're done with your artwork, like I said, you, uh, you're ready to choose a good color. And I usually, um, well, like I said, I like the black for the black cat because of the silhouette. I chose pink to highlight the dress. Also, I would use pink for this one. I, uh, what did I do with my, my butterfly? Here we go. I found a piece, this is a nice autumn color, but it also would be great to put the butterfly on, either that one or this one, you see? And then once you draw your oval around it, you're on your way. So you choose a nice color to use for your backing, for your matte board, for the matted effect, and then you're ready to cut it out and put it in a frame. So you can see it's really easy to make something that's gonna look very professional. So I hope you'll get creative and try some of this at home. I'd love it if you would show us what you've done. Post it on Facebook and let us see what you're doing too. I hope this will give you some ideas. Thank you for watching and be safe, be happy and keep reading.